The front column are the monk civil servants in order of importance, up to the cabinet ministers who ride alongside His Holiness. Behind the palanquin are his two personal tutors and then his immediate family members. The lay civil officials bring up the rear at the end of the procession according to one's rank and position. It was the same protocol as when you would have an official audience with His Holiness. As a junior civil servant, my turn would come somewhere at the very end. I went to see the Dalai Lama many times. We would stand on both sides of the route. Because he traveled in a palanquin, you only be able to get occasional glance of him. We used to also stand in line with the crowd and view and get a blessing from His Holiness while he was in the palanquin. Because everything was so silent, incense burning, and people very quiet and trying hard to get a glimpse of him. And at the end, they would have the army band coming, which was more fun. I mean, sort of. A lot of love, you know, excitement then. Oh, that young monk, I think out of curiosity, looking. In any case, from my childhood, from that age, I always smile with people, with public. So people also, you see, love my smile. So whenever I, I look like that, the people express some kind of hostility. What's the no, expression of overjoys. I think around, I think, 10 years old, around 10, when, when I look this, is, I feel the people consider or the reincarnation of High Lama. But actually, that young boy, I think, think only play how to play. <laughs> so there is big contrast. <laughs> These days, there isn't quite the same spectacle when the Dalai Lama travels. Although lots of devotees turn out to see him, his bodyguards are now armed with walkie-talkies, and he travels in a modest, though bulletproof, car. Tibetan Buddhists have retained much of their culture and religious practice since going into exile. But life in Tibet before the Chinese occupation was significantly different in many ways. The Tibetan year is marked by many religious festivals. Here, at the Dalai Lama's own Namgyal Monastery, thousands of people gather to celebrate New Year. This takes place in late February early March, but sadly, far fewer festivals are celebrated now than they were in Tibet. The King's New Year Festival celebrates the Dalai Lama's position as the ruler of both church and state. The high officials wear robes whose design dates back to the seventh century, along with ancient ornaments of amber and coral which had been traded along the Silk Route and had originally come from the Mediterranean. The turquoise charm boxes around their necks and the golden bar encased in turquoise, which reaches their waist is so heavy it must be carried. The ordinary people of Lhasa gather at the foot of a potala to watch the sky dancing, a spectacle which a man scales a rope up to a tall wooden mast, stands precariously on a small platform and then spins himself around. The performer is traditionally a man from one of the small villages in the region of Sang. It's done in retribution for their resistance to the rule of the fifth Dalai Lama. There's a saying in Sang, mothers don't die from illnesses, but from worry that the sons might be taken for the sky dance. The casting out of the votive offering was one of the biggest and most elaborate of the celebrations. This ceremonial military maneuver was known as the coiling snake. With civil officials acting as marshals, 500 infantry in chain mail move in a zigzag formation, while another formation circles it. 
Seemingly chaotic, was highly organized, and the troops rehearsed for months to perfect it. Hundreds of monks arrive, carrying green drums and cymbals. Next, the Torma are brought out. Tall sculptures which have a grinning skull on top and represent all evil spirits. Wearing an ornate headdress, the natural oracle, a monk who has chosen for his psychic powers, appears in a state of possession. The oracle's helmet and costume are so heavy that a medium can hardly walk in them when he's not in a trance-like state. He races around chaotically, chasing the Tormas into a clearing, accompanied by hundreds of monks and most of the population of Larsa. When the oracle arrives, he shoots a burning arrow into bonfires which contain the evil spirits, and they're set ablaze. Many of the religious festivals had an additional civil or governmental element. At the review at Trapchi, the Tibetan cavalry assembled in front of the cabinet and government officials. The cavalry wears chain mail, steel breastplates and helmets with peacock feathers on them. The standard bearers wear special helmets which have Allah inscribed on them in gold, thought to date back to 8th century contact with Arabs. They carry tall lances wrapped in painted banners, said to have been given by the army of Genghis Khan's grandson. The cabinet wears ornate robes. Their fur-trimmed hats have silk crowns with ornaments on top of coral, turquoise and gold. A government official, followed by four junior officials, makes his report to the cabinet, announcing the number of men and horses. Shio Daji had to attend the review every year. These official functions tended to be rather long, drawn-out affairs. However, each one of us had our own responsibilities to perform. As you can see here in the film, when we junior accountants had to present the inspection report at the review at Trapchi, we had to give the full list of horsemen and their equipment. So I had feel very tense from early in the morning as I had to present the report aloud in front of a huge gathering of people. I would worry that I would make mistakes and embarrass myself, so I felt scared. I would be so terrified that time would just fly past. But when I had no responsibilities, the ceremony would get tedious and seem to go on forever. So we young ones would quietly sneak out the back for a cigarette and a chat. Another military event, the gallop round the fort, was slightly more exciting to attend. These are the special Molam Festival Cavalry. Two Yasu generals command them. Together they are being prepared to lead the presentation. There were three targets. The riders had to ride past, fire a gun, shoot an arrow and spare each one. If they managed to hit each of the targets, they would be presented with a victory scarf. The targets are hung perilously close to the spectators' heads. There is frighteningly little crowd control and serious accidents result. Finally, the competitors line up to receive their prayer scarfs. The event ends when they perform a special Mongolian salute. Other pursuits were more gentle. The people of Lhasa, rich and poor alike, took advantage of the summer festivals to enjoy their environment. During the month of celebrations to honor the Buddha's enlightenment, the government ministers and officials are rowed around a lake to make offerings 